What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am your host of Shock Talk, Shocky, and I am here with Beta Scott. Hello. So, you debuted in 2011. What is the fe- what is that feeling like knowing that you've been wrestling for seven years now? Oh, has it been that long? Oh God. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of just getting started with a lot of things right now. So I'm like finally getting into a groove, which is good because I think it takes a while to kind of figure out who you are and what you do. Um, I'm doing the traveling that I want to do now. So um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing this. Uh, Probably a while. Probably a while. I don't know. Like every time I think like, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. I like find some reason to. So who knows? Maybe forever. I'm never retiring. Like, I'm just going to have a match and never wrestle again. Like, you're, you're not going to know. It's going to be my last match, and then I'll just notice that I haven't, like, taken any bookings for a year. Except for maybe conventions. I mean, that, like, that's my plan. Just, like, be done. Goodbye. Maybe it was tonight. Who knows? It's a mystery. Don't, don't play me like that. <laughs> no, I, I'm wrestling tomorrow. Good. <laughs> but then, who knows? June 16th. Yeah, okay, after June 16th, who knows? <laughs> so, being a wrestler for seven years, do you still have any dream matches? Oh gosh, I hate this question only because um, I feel like every time I say anyone, I think of someone else. Like, I kind of just want the opportunity to, to wrestle everywhere against anyone. So, pretty much if I've not wrestled someone, I probably want to. Um, being in a tag uh, or just a singles match. Like, if I've not been in the ring with someone, then I probably have a reason to want to. Y- you know, I'll, I'll just be uh, her, her jury match and we'll just go in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> Were you always a wrestling fan or did you see something that made you love wrestling and then you became a fan? No, um, I've always been a wrestling fan. Uh, I don't remember not being a wrestling fan and not having pro wrestling in my life at all. Um, So there was never like one thing. I've just been a wrestling fan my whole life. Like I don't I don't remember up to any time in my childhood where I wasn't watching wrestling or like wrestling in my backyard or whatever. So originally when you started you were the legal counselor for Gregory Iron. Now you're clearly a cat fanatic or maybe a psychopath. (laughs) What went into your transition to one day be the character you are now? Um, well, I'm still uh, legally inclined, and I have always loved cats. There's just moments in time where like one thing is like comes to the forefront a little bit more than others. Uh, but I could still always handle my own like contracts and negotiations and everything, so that's handy. So two of the wrestlers you managed one being Cedric Alexander, the other being Moose. How do you feel seeing both of them doing big things in their respective companies? Oh man, it's so awesome. Um, Moose and I have had the chance to be on a, a bunch of shows together in England, uh, you know, since he's really blown up with impact and he's just doing so well for himself. And like, what what else can you say about Cedric? Like he, he took a situation where he just wasn't, like his potential just wasn't being seen. And like he made the world recognize how good he is and now he's, he's the best. So yeah, I, cu- I could not be happier for him. You've been in and out of the management role throughout your career. How did you originally become a manager? And were you sort of disappointed when that became your role at first? No, um, of course not. Uh, I, I love managing. I think it is an art. I think it, that there's a whole school of professional wrestling behind it. I think great managers um, are rare. Um, and I, I actually really admire people that completely devote their careers to managing. Um, for me, I was wrestling uh, and then just in certain uh, promotions, for example, Ring of Honor, they weren't really doing women's wrestling. So there wasn't that opportunity for me. So I was lucky to be able to get um, any sort of position for myself. I, I didn't think I would ever work for ROH. That was kind of like a journey in itself. So um, to have the opportunity to work there at all was not something that I expected. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I think management is like being a wrestling manager is an art. I'm not saying that I'm even particularly good at it, but some people are, and they really did. They just see it as, as much of a craft as being in the ring. And that, that's how it should be looked at. So you were 2012 Pro Wrestling Insiders Rookie of the Year. Were you shocked that? Yeah, um, that was really surprising. It was neat though because uh, my mom could get a copy of it, and that was sweet um, because like she she knows what I do, but it's not like a tangible thing for her most of the time. She doesn't watch wrestling. She doesn't come to shows. She just knows that I, I travel a lot. So it's neat whenever there's something in print like PWI or wherever that I can actually give her. So that's cool. 
You were coming off with two huge matches. Your first was a gender reveal for Carlos, the founder of Battle Club Pro. Your second was a triple threat match where you sadly lost. But how was your first taste of Battle Club? Um, oh, it was awesome. Uh, the the gender reveal is one of the like stranger stipulation matches I've ever been in, but it was great. Of course, I won, so they're gonna have a girl, which is neat uh, and magic. I'm a wizard. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Um, and then the second match, uh, I, I believe there was a cancellation. So uh, I just inserted, I, or Leva Bates, I'm sorry, Commissioner Leva Bates inserted me into that match. Uh, and it didn't go my way, but, um, you know, it was, it was a tough match. All right, lastly, I'd like to wrap up with what has been your favorite moment of your career so far? Um, I wouldn't say that I have a favorite moment, but um, the best thing for me is just traveling. As much as I get to travel, that's that's what all I wanted out of wrestling. So um, I don't necessarily have a favorite moment per se. Like I don't have my like WrestleMania moment or whatever. Uh, it's just the the past year, especially like all the, the travel I've gotten to do and all the opportunities I've had to just wrestle all over the world, which um, is something that I wanted more than anything, but didn't think was possible. All right. Thank you very much for being on. I'll make sure to link everything I can of you. Thank you. In the description. Thank you again so much. Thank you. And have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you.